Hey everyone, it's me GamerTurk. We were promised a Sword Art Online news explosion and we have received that Sword Art Online news explosion. If you've been following me and SAO Wiki on Twitter or have checked out my uploads recently, we have received two brand new Licorice trailers with a lot of context, a new Licorice original character reveal, a release year information, a new mobile game announcement, more actual Fatal Blood story content coming, just a, a lot of stuff there. Now, before we begin, let me say this because I know it's why most of you have clicked this video. Bandai Namco confirmed the release year for Elicization Licorice as 2020, no specific month or specific date given. Now, given the news, I expect the release to be a summer slash fall 2020, but if you're interested in the reasons why, I will provide a lot more information today. There are also timestamps below so you can skip stuff you are not interested in. If you're not interested in anything else than the release date, 2020 is the best answer I can provide you and I hope you leave a like before you leave, you know, it, it helps the channel a lot against self-inflicted drama channels. There's just so much to talk so I don't really know where to begin right now so let's go chronological shall we? And I'll leave all the integral factor news to a separate video otherwise we'll sit here for 30 plus minutes and I'll edit this video probably in 3 days if that's the case. And mind you all relevant videos, trailers, gameplay clips will be linked in the description and we start with the Gameverse trailer featuring a teaser of the new character of Alicization Licorice as well. I absolutely love this trailer, it's a 2D animated trailer in its entirety and focuses on a majority of iconic events of the game versus past as well as its future in Elicization Licorice. It opens up with the nostalgic hollow fragment theme in the red fields filled with licorice flowers with our mysterious newcomer in focus. Followed up by a lot of visuals that gamers fans will easily recognize from the past. And mind you, I'll be going in detail as to where these visuals are from, they are very iconic visuals from the gamers, as well as put links in the description and pinned comment for the original source for those scenes, you know, from the respective game, whether it's an animated cutscene or a CG gallery event. So if you're not interested in a breakdown of this gamers trailer, you should just skip to the next timestamp in the pinned comment. In the intro cards we see lovely visuals with the main heroines of the installment looking away from the camera and it really showcases how big of a universe the gameverse has become at this point. We start with the original infinity moment with Strea looking to one of the many towns of Aincrad followed by Philia with the hollow fragment release in the hollow area looking towards the Bastia gate that you may remember from the spiral shit around the tower. We see Rain in real life between buildings trying to follow her passion while making a life for herself by singing which is a much better choice than any possible in-game imagery in my opinion for this as Rain is the central emotional figure of the game not Seven's experiment or Swart Alfheim in this case. Hollow Realization is represented by Premiere in the Teleport Gate Plaza of Ground and Fatal Bullet by Kureha looking towards the SPC Groken area. But then starts the actual 2D animation and all these amazing moments from the gameverse. The cutscene of Philia fighting against Kirto from the very beginning of Hollow Fragment, right before encountering the Skull Reaper, followed by Seven's concert from Lost Song. But of course, Rain is not forgotten as the CG gallery image of her breaking down in front of Kirito after a quest against Loki is just a beautiful moment. Premier praying to a tree in the area with Kirtu and Asuna as she was dictated by her quest programming at the time in Hollow Realization. The Victorian dress event with Zeliska and Daisy, you know Daisy requests your help to get two matching outfits to make Zeliska happy. We go back a little to the second DLC of Hollow Realization, Tuner of Causality, as Tia is slowly drifting further into agony and pain, refusing to accept the help of Kirto and others, Strea sacrificing herself to save Kirto from Alberic who is controlled by Nobuyuki Sugo before she promptly merges with the GM avatar of Kayaba had used at the beginning of the game, one of the more powerful moments of Hollow Fragment but not the most powerful in my opinion but luckily they actually did include my favorite scene as well, we'll get there in a bit. Kureha swiping her menu away angrily, most probably from the scene where she challenges you to a duel to prove herself. We see Tia finishing the final prayer of the twin goddesses on her own, causing the great separation and creating an incomplete Aincrad over Aincrad. Kirito saving Philia from Hollow Post final strike, slashing his arm off completely in the process as Philia is severely conflicted after she had betrayed Kirito and causing him to be ambushed by Paul just earlier. Rain and Seven finally reuniting in Lost Song, 
Sakuraya watching the sunset with the Fatal Bull protagonist is one of the more heartwarming scenes of that game, Premiere abandoning her programming completely as she breaks down in front of Kirito in Hollow Realization, my personal favorite follows this one in the Hollow area, after Streya has been lost to the GM avatar after being stabbed by Sugo, Hollow copy of Streya saving Kirito in the final moments against a goddamn hard boss, it was honestly such a great moment what was relatively unexpected turn of events in that case with what it inspired afterwards as well. And all of these moments reflecting in Kirito's eyes as we zoom out to the licorice field. One last showcase of all of Kirito's memories and yes I am referring to quote unquote Kirito's memories for a very specific reason that I'll make a separate video about in the future because the latter licorice trailer does something that grabbed my attention as well for an incredible theory that may end up being true, but before I derail this section which has been awfully long already, we see the characters one last time, Stray and Philly are not really direct references here, Rain and 7-1 despite having their lost song outfits is a direct reference to Hollow Realization Warriors of the Sky update event, T and Premiere holding hands is a direct reference to the ending of Hollow Realization DLC 3 and we see Kureha and Zeliska which at most seems to be a reference that they hang out together in the Elicization anime but all of this fades into the Rulit trio extending their hand of friendship to the new character Medina Ortinanos and the final visual showcases them walking towards the central cathedral which I think is just a very neat background visual and nothing more with the lack of a city inside around it, you know, the, the characters and their appearances involved, the lack of characters involved etc. Don't, don't ask further, it'll be spoilers, just, just makes me think this picture does not really reflect any specific instance in the game but I would still love to have a version of this without the goddamn logo to make my phone background. This Game Wars trailer was just the beginning of the SEO Games panel at the Beaters Cafe event. With the introduction of the new character, she was revealed as Medina Ortinanos, voiced by Okasaki Miho. And well, she was looking at us for a dozen days now on the EX Chronicle event key visual by Abek. With her voice actor reveal, the event continued with a second trailer, this time focusing solely on Elicization Licorice. And well, this trailer opens up with... Remember the shot from the previous one where all of the previous game were scenes that I refer to as Kirito's memories flash on Kirito's eyes as we zoomed out to the licorice field? Well, <laughs> this trailer opens with Kirito asking himself, are these my memories with the exact same scene? There is a lot to speculate on this and it'll be more of a fun speculation I will do in a separate video. I don't want to get so much speculation involved in an informational video here so if you're interested once again subscribing and hitting that bell icon is the best way to ensure you receive the video when I upload it. YouTube works in mysterious ways. But we continue, we got a lot of scenes from the cloud top garden on floor 80 in the Axiom Church as well as scenes from Queen Ella's chambers. The scenes with Alice you'll also remember from the anime, the sentence that follows is when she comes to apprehend Kirito and Yuji at the academy, I just love the scale of the end mountains visible here in the background, unlike the previous games, Licorice does not shy away from showcasing the grander outer fields, you know, like in Hollow Realization you would spend a lot of times in valley like maps, obstructing the view around, you couldn't see much beyond the stuff that was around the map, but in Licorice you can see everywhere around which feels incredibly fresh and open, but again the footage here is not very new considering they showcased all Rulid and the spider boss literally everywhere in the past 2-3 days, but afterwards we see Alice on the outer facade of the Axiom Church with the seal of the right eye, we see Yujiro rushing towards Quinella with the blue rose sword and Quinella blowing him backwards. We once again return to the Cloud Top Garden here to the fight between Alice and Kirito both using their perfect weapon control arts right before blowing up the wall where Kirito is specifically aiming for Alice's sword hilt, a key detail anime did not even convey. However, unlike the main canon, when Alice was using the pedals to attack with her sword not remaining in physical form, here we see that the pedals actually do form the sword, so that's a neat detail that was changed into another neat detail in the game from the main canon. Interestingly, we see Kirito face to face with Kid Alice. In the main canon this was never the case, as the only interaction that Kid Alice had with Kirito was in the end mountains right after the Ugachi battle. 
This scene draws a lot of inspiration from the Yujo bonding with Alice scene during that final battle when he was fusing, so considering Yujo is not dying in the game verse, this may be a change that Alice works with Kirito instead in some way in the final battle rather than fusing with Yujo and yes, Yujo is confirmed to be not dying in the game verse by Nobunaga Shimazaki, Yujo's VA as well. But if you've been following my channel, you already learned about this when you were watching my trailer analysis when Licorice was first revealed all those months ago. Then we get the line that Yujo says after freezing Alice and Kirito, a line that anime skipped for some reason, apologizing from them and telling them not to follow him, and we get the title card. I'm really glad that the game is putting in all these little cues, details that even the anime has skipped, but easily remembered by the light novel readers due to the emotional impacts of these very small details in comparison. Surprisingly, these are the things that actually do give me hope that the non-canon Licorice can adapt certain canon events more accurately than the anime has. I just want to have the goddamn Zakaria chapter and I'll be thrilled if they can achieve telling that story from the perspective of Charlotte somehow. I'm, I'm really eager to see what they do with that. But after the title card, Medina takes up the spotlight in the middle of the Licorice field and introduces herself as a disgraced noble, very similar to Sortilina and Golgoroso, and wants to become an integrity knight to clear his family name. Little does she know the reality behind the Order of the Knights. The Japanese Licorice website also provides more information on her, she's a second rank noble so actually pretty high up there in terms of authority if her family name was not stained of course. Thus she seeks to re-legitimize her family by becoming strong and earning military favor. Again, I'll have more speculative videos later down the line regarding possible theories so stay tuned for those, this is just informational stuff from the entire event. We got interesting announcements regarding Fatal Bullet, the summer update with the remaining typeset weapons, cosmetics and Lievre's invitations is set to go live on August 22nd, so it's, it's almost here. However, the major news is that Fatal Bullet has been confirmed to get more updates down the line after this summer update, including actual story additions, something, something we have not really expected at all, considering Complete Edition has come out a while back and we expected that to be actually complete. Now the story edition is tentatively slated for winter 2019 and considering the complete edition is out there are two options out there. It's very clear that this update is being made to bridge the gap to Licorice release in 2020 that I'll talk about in a bit but the fact that a complete edition exists right now for Fatal Bullet makes the situation a little complicated. A story edition requires a fair amount of additional effort compared to the simple updates that were the April update and the August update that's gonna come in two days, which were free editions by the way. The first option for the upcoming story edition is that to honor the complete edition, the upcoming winter story update will be free as well, so everyone who purchased the complete edition, trusting it was actually complete, would be able to get it without paying extra as well. However, the added effort of a story update makes me think that it would be too much of a blow for Bandai Namco to offer this story for free. So the other option is that Bandai Namco will actually publish the new story update as DLC 5 as an additional purchase and if that happens, I can naturally see that the complete edition owners will cause a severe backlash. There is a middle ground that the story edition is very budgetary edition with no voice acting, no real new content and just a rehash of old stuff uh, to, to actually release for free which eh, I, I'm not sure how excited I would be for such a case. To be frank, more than the story update itself, I am more excited to see how Bandai Namco will approach the update from a business standpoint. And yes, while we're on the topic, let's talk about Licorice release as well. Bandai Namco West also shared the Licorice trailer from Japan as the Gamescom trailer and along with it shared that the game will come out in 2020. I have expected that much and have been urging everyone to not expect a 2019 release since the very first Licorice trailer, however the added Fatal Bullet update schedule changes things a little. I initially expected a spring 2020 release for Elicization Licorice, you know right after the War of Underworld part of Elicization anime finishes. However, the promise of a winter story update for Fatal Blood makes me feel like they are trying to put something out there to provide 
a bridge to a, a much longer gap than we initially thought. This leads me to assume Elicitation Liquoris will be slated either for Summer or Fall 2020 release. Again, this is a very vague speculation on my end, but do be prepared for a possible mid or late 2020 release possibility rather than an early 2020, so you don't end up getting disappointed. Uh, of course, I, I don't need to mention this, but make sure to follow me as AOVK on official Bandai Namco channels regularly for an official update, you know, instead of instead of a vague speculation that I'm doing right now based on information provided. Moving further though, Yujiro's actor Shimazaki Nobunaga once again confirmed Yujiro would not be dying in the game wars, which Futami had many comments hinting at this earlier already. And on top of this, if you've been following me since the announcement trailer times, I had already talked about how the initial trailer has more or less more than confirmed Yujiro would not be dying in multiple scenes, so you can check that if you want more context as to, you know, how this was not a secret at all. However, I want to clarify, Japanese is a context-heavy language and during speech, a lack of context can cause translation to remain very vague. And when that happens, people can naturally be misled, so I want to explain something here. Nobunaga's statement was that, and I quote, there will be a Yujiro survival drought. The way it was phrased sounded very ambiguous, however this does not come as a confirmation of multiple storylines and I have to reiterate Game Wars lead Yosuke Futami had already stated there would not be multiple endings in Alicization Liquorice. What Nobunaga meant here was most certainly that the game was taking a different route than the main canon, not that there are multiple routes in the game. Anyways, we got more information regarding gameplay, which I'll just show gameplay clips while I talk here. The battles are a combination of regular attacks, sword skills and sacred arts. Regular attacks can be chained and will build up your skill gauge. You can chain skills coordinated with your partner, all of which have special effects. And in fact, in gameplay clips we have seen if you charge up your Warpal Strike, it turns into an incarnate Warpal Strike that Kirito used against Chudelkin with the Light Beam for example. I talked about this in my previous gameplay analysis video, you can check that. I may be seeing wrong, but this glint you see here may be the skill connect chain indicator you will remember from the previous games, although the gameplay information provided in the panel did not confirm the existence of skill chaining. So take this as somewhat of a speculation, although it's very likely to be skill connect, since it does exist in elicitation and is integral to many fights despite the anime completely disregarding the existence of the concept during course of the adaptation in multiple critical scenes. I will point you to my Elicitation Explained series if you're curious about where Skill Connect was actually used in the anime, it should have been used in the anime, both episode 14 and episode 24 had major instances of Skill Connect. Anyways, the demos only featured two elements to use for Sacred Arts, Thermal and Cryogenic elements, but the panel confirmed there will be 8 elements in total you can use in battles. Licoris will feature a lot of underworld locations as well, which we knew already. The panel showcases two Ruli shots and one End Mountains Cave shot. I'm just hoping it will have places like Zakaria and a lot more places that can fill the Kirito and Yujiro's journey towards Santoria and end up adapting side stories like Distant Journey in the process as well. Medina gameplay was showcased which I've been using as my background footage among other things but the key aspect of the Medina gameplay is that she does build a katana. Everything we have seen so far has been one-handed sword gameplay, you know, with Kirito, Alice and Yujiro, so it was refreshing to see some katana gameplay here. It's also encouraging because Underworld has a huge variety of weaponry, two-handed swords, whips, rapiers, bows and things as crazy as throwing stars, a highlight weapon for Renly Synthesis 27, one of the integrated knights you will get to meet and has a cool story to tell. Futami also confirmed that Medina will be playable as well alongside Kirito, Yujiro and Alice as as you could have guessed from the demo, but refused to comment on any other future playable characters. But at this point, it's very likely we will have the traditional weaponry characters like Berkuli, Fanatio, Fizel, and Linal, etc. be playable, as the underlying weapon trees are included, or in the case of Rapier and Dagger, uh, they are very likely to be included, as they can be ported from Hollow Realization relatively easily with adjustments, etc. The question falls upon the likes of Eldri, Sortilina with their whips, Dusolbert with his bow, Renly with his throwing stars, etc. I can also tell you why one of those three types is absolutely guaranteed to be included among a dozen other characters that will definitely be playable, but that will be spoilers for War of Underworld and I do not want to provide spoilers in an informational video here. I can talk about that in another spoiler video if 
there's interest, so do let me know. We also received a brand new gorgeous key visual for Elicization Licorice featuring Kirito, Yujo, Alice and Medina with the central cathedral in the backdrop along with Giga Cedar on the left and the reddish reflection on the clouds on the right originating from the dark territory. Elicization Licorice outfit contest is officially live as well, I'll link the appropriate guide thread from our SAO Wikia coverage down below if you want to submit your creation. There will be three winners chosen from each region, those regions being Japan, Asia excluding Japan, North America and others. So Australia, mates, you're bundled with us Europeans, Latin America and Africa, I'm sorry, I'm honestly not sure if this competition includes you guys, there is not a lot of clear information about where you actually belong when things come from Japan, I'm, I don't know, I'm sorry. The winners will receive a free digital version of Elicization Licorice and will have their outfits included in the game, with your name included in the credits of the game as well, as early purchase bonuses in Japan and pre-order bonuses in the western regions, which I have to say is incredibly unfair. If Japan gets them as early purchase bonuses, it's, it's highly unethical for the West to use these to convince people into pre-ordering instead. I recommend speaking up to Bandai Namco on Twitter, on Facebook, etc. to convince them for a parity between regions here. Full disclosure, this does not affect me at all, I am pre-ordering the collector's edition the moment it's announced, but still I feel like others should not have to adjust their pre-order or purchase plans due to such a business practice. Another announcement is that Licorice will be featured at Tokyo Game Show 2019, which is uh, not surprising at all, along with a playable demo. We may get another trailer there and maybe a couple more details, but it's in September 19, it's really really close, so there may not be a lot of revelations in addition to what we got here. This however brings us to the anime and light novel stage, which <laughs> didn't have any new information whatsoever, it felt more like an advertisement regarding the accomplishments of SAO so far, the first volume of the most recent arc, volume 21 Unital Ring, selling really really well, some chatting with the cast and Reki Kawahara etc. If you want more info on the final SAO arc Unital Ring, you should watch my video on it, again, check description for a link. The only key announcement from the anime and light novel stage was the teaser trailer for a brand new mobile game, Elicization Blading or Elicization Braiding, according to sources like Anime News Network, it does sound funny. Elicization certainly has more about blades than braids, and even though blading is not really an English word, this is English we're talking about, so Japanese can conjure up whatever word that sounds English, regardless of that word existing or not. So, yeah, we, we translated that trailer at SAO over here, again, link is in the description, but no information about the game was provided, and the teaser is quite vague as well, introducing a new Integrity Knight. More info will be revealed on August 30th, and until then, you can listen to Gotin's Games making 5 videos about how this game we know nothing about may just kill off Integral Factor. That, that's a joke, Gotians, I'm just teasing you. I know you did not make a video on how it'll kill Integral Factor off, and never will because you're not that terrible of a person. You, you don't need to make another 16 minute video on a minor joke I did, based on how you made a 16 minute video because you were offended by my cheekily worded sentences calling out a simple mistake you did that anyone could have made, hoping you would simply fix it at the source with a pinned comment, instead of creating an entire drama situation out of it. But yeah, that, that's the recap of all the major news from the SAO Beaters meeting event. As I said, Integral Factor had a lot of news as well on their weekend stream, as well as during the event. I'll cover those in a separate video, so stay tuned if you're one of those 200 amazing people who watch me for Integral Factor news. In the meanwhile, I recently launched my limited time 25k merch, possibly will be around for like 3 months or until I reach 26k subscribers, so if you want to mark yourself as one of the original 25,000 followers of the channel, go check it out, we got hoodies, t-shirts for both male and female fit, a mug because why the fuck not, and a sticker among other cool looking merch if you're interested. If you're a patron or a channel member and want to get any of these, please just wait a week or so. I'll generate special discount codes for you patrons and members, I've just been too swamped and thus been procrastinating so far on it. But that brings us to the end of this newsplosion, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon for the best and most accurate Sword Art Online content on YouTube. Gotians fans, that, that's just the motto, I still encourage you all to point out where you see a mistake I made and hold me accountable for stuff I share here so I can correct my mistakes to ensure people don't get misguided. Thank you all for watching and as always a huge thanks to all my patrons and YouTube members who are supporting my channel directly there. 
I got a lot more videos to do and suffer as I upload each individual one in about 7 hours due to the amazing blessings of Turk Telecom and their infrastructure in my summer residence, so please stay tuned for those lengthy uploads. Until then, stay cool everyone.